There are no ideal choices. Saturday, January the 29th, 2022, the James Neil Cooper channel. My name is James. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my show. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome to all the people who have been subscribers for years. And welcome to the people who just found this by accident or recommend, um, a recommendation on YouTube. Now, lots to cover today, but let's hop into it straight away. Basically, it's about the two big dams in the world and which one produces the most electricity on a regular standard year. Let's do it. But before we get to that, just some images that I have captured from not in recent months, but in more recent years, that when the Free Gorges does get a little bit overflowed or overfilled, these are kind of some of the pictures that you get when they open the sluice gates and the residents below are not warned. When they're not warned, things happen like this. If they're not told, then the insurance doesn't pay. Something that we've done before, but it's a reminder sometimes of harsh living in the CCP. Remember, CC, Xi Jinping first, CCP, party second, um, money is the next one, and finally, the people of the People's Republic of China. Very strange. Now, if the Free Gorges Dam was operating at 100% capacity, it would be able to, they say, able to, to produce 2% of the 2% of the entire electricity needed for China, which is a staggering number. It is the same for New York City for something, I can't remember the actual years. New York City has a population of 8 million, I think. So 2% of China for the biggest dam in the world that's meant to produce the largest amount of electricity is tiny. Such is life. Two dams, the Three Gorges in China, in central China, and the other big dam that produces a lot of electricity in Brazil. And this is called the IIE Itaipu, Itaipu Dam. Yes, I got it. I remembered Itaipu Dam. The Three Gorges produces 101, 600,000 kilowatts per hour, 101,600,000 kilowatts per hour on a good year. Pretty good, huh? Let's go to the E Taipu Dam, which produces 103,600,000 kilowatts per hour. Even though this dam is half, even quarter, the size of the Three Gorges. Why does it produce more electricity? The simple reason is the, I, the E Taipu Dam is in a tropical rainforest. Rain, rain and rain. It rains every day. It's basically on the equator. If you've ever been to Singapore or places like on the equator, it rains near enough every day. Therefore, they can guarantee or semi-guarantee the water, the powerful water, which is going to spin the turbines. And I can say the water is a lot cleaner as well because there's less pollution, you could say, in the rainforest, in the Amazon rainforest. The Free Gorges Dam produces less and not guaranteed and not stable. And this is on a good year or you could say a floody kind of year when the water levels are high, would only, but it's not stable. We've seen pictures before of droughts downstream of the Free Gorges Dam. You would always see water in the reservoir, but we don't know unless we look at the charts of the levels and how much water is pushing into the turbines if all 32 turbines are working. It was meant to produce 10% of China's electricity. It's down by 80% and it only produces two, which is 
just a complete waste of money. A quote from Ted. Despite Free Gorge's record-setting scale, the Itaipu Dam still produce more power. So who wins? Well, it's one to Brazil and it's zero to China. I'm just wondering though, the Itaipu Dam, who does it belong to? Because China seems to have quite a heavy investment in Brazil. And I hope that it's not owned by any Chinese company because then it's going to be not maintained well. The workers are not going to be Brazilian. They're going to be mostly Chinese. It's the way that it just happens. In this country, in Shahanokville, you may not know it, it's a town in the south. It's being developed and most of the workers do come from China. But that's another story. So Itaipu, Itaipu, I hope is not going to be controlled by any free gorges um, company or any power company because we see what happens to, we see what happens to these companies when they do get bought over, they make money from it, they go to disrepair and then they sell it back to the original owner for a quarter of the price. Okay, haven't done this for a while. Let's have a look at the levels for you. 170 has gone down in Kutan at Chongqing. 600 kilometers away from the Free Gorge is going west. 170.59. And the Free Gorges has gone down as well, but not a lot. We're talking centimeters here. 170.31. Don't know the inflow, that's not available today, but the outflow is 6,890. So tiny and minute. We just have to wait for next month to see if the levels do go down because there are some theories that they are saving the water for the electricity so they can quote the Olympic Games is 100% green energy and no fossil fuel. Let's just wait and see if the levels start to drop uh, from February 4 with the Olympic Games just looming. The Olympic Games in Beijing is a closed loop. Only athletes are allowed in and the people who are working and they cannot leave this city, so, so to speak, within a city. So the athletes can't go and explore Beijing. They're just locked inside the um, Olympic Village. So they're sort of on a lockdown. It's a weird Winter Olympic Games this year. So strange. Let's do the weather. And I'm not going to speak over this one. We're going to have the musical weather. And it's quite a long one. It's over a minute because I want you to see towards the end of next week, the end of next week, there is about 4.5, 4.6 centimeters. So that's just under two inches of snow at, yes, at the Free Gorges Dam. Have a look at this weather forecast. Let's do something a little bit different. The Fight Club, do you remember the movie, The Fight Club with Brad Pitt all those years ago? A really great movie and a really 
wonderful ending has been released in China. Now, Brad Pitt has not been able to show films for at least 20 years in China. He was banned from entering China, anything to do with China, because of his uh, true, well, not true, but epic movie about seven years in Tibet, which did include the Japanese invasion during World War II, perhaps. Anyhow... <laughs> Let me read you this. This is the ending. So what they've done in the cinemas or streaming networks is they cut the ending and they just changed it into some words. And the words read like this. Through the clue provided by Tyler, the police rapidly figured out the whole plan and arrested all criminals, successfully preventing the bomb from exploding after the trial. Tyler was sent to a lunatic asylum receiving psychological treatment. He was discharged from the hospital in 2012. What a crock of... And something even more lighthearted for no apparent reason at all. And why not? Just want to say hello to a couple of people who said hello to me. I'm saying hello back on the channel. Hello to Rod. Rod San from Chile. Uh, Chile. Beautiful wine, beautiful country, lovely. Yeah, I've been there to Valparaiso a couple of times, yeah, and enjoyed one or two nights there a long time ago. And also, who else we got? Like, say hello to Cindy. Good morning, James. Thank you for all you do from the US of A, USA. If anyone else wants to just leave a message like that, please do so, and I will do a CNP, a copy and paste and maybe I'll put it at the end of the show. Just something a little bit different. Why not using the information provided? It's Saturday, have a awesome weekend. If you are Chinese, it's the start of the Chinese New Year. You won't have to, well, if you're in China, you won't have to work Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You near enough have seven whole days off. Do enjoy that festival time. And if you want to, give me a hong bao any lucky money um, just see the links in the description below i'm joking that's it be good be well be safe bye bye for now <laughs>